welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 Restoration Channel. For those of you new, my name's Barry. Well, probably, as you can see, the weather's broke. Believe it or not, Monday, Sunday, Monday. Sunday was minus 5. 20, no, the 18th of December was minus 5, and here in the northeast. Monday, the 19th, was plus 13 degrees, an 18 degree swing. And I was talking to Marshall, uh, Marshall Smart, who has his own channel up in Aberdeen, doing tractors. He was still minus 17. Unbelievable. The, the, on Monday, um, the place started to thaw that quickly with the warm air. Uh, it wasn't sunshine, it was just warm air. And what was happening was the water, the ice was thawing on the top with the warm air. But then it became water and it put a barrier over the top of the ice. And then the heat couldn't get to the ice anymore. And it was absolutely lethal. Absolutely lethal. We were moving cows on Monday and Tuesday. And it was just dangerous as hell. Yesterday the ground began to get soft. So it wasn't so bad. But then everything just started plunging once it softened off. So anyway, back to what we're doing today. The gearbox. We're going to take the gearbox to bits today because even if we can get the diff out and get the gearbox broken down, we can then um, at least get the parts onto the bench, start and get them cleaned up, break the shafts down to the components and get everything checked. Now then, this is a clear vindication for Lance, Rob, Shane, uh, John Perry, Anybody who said strip the gearbox, I don't know how I didn't see this in the first place, but get a look at this. <clears throat> you see down in here, so we've got a pointy stick. See down in here, this bearing is in totally the wrong place, it shouldn't be sticking out. This face here should be flush with a casting. And this washer here is supposed to keep it in. And for some reason, that washer's got a flat on it. But we'll, we'll have a good look when we get all this to bits today. Right guys, let's start and get this to bits. We'll get set up, back in a minute. Let's crack on. We're gonna start and get the caps off. What I've done here is I've dotted the caps. This has got one on, this has got two on. I've also dotted the bearing carriers either side so they all go back in the same place you cannot mix the caps with the casting if you break one of these caps or you lose a one or you cannot interchange them you can't get another cap off a spare frame you have to get the entire casting it's a bit windy today but we'll see how the audio goes you might end up getting a voiceover on top of this but we'll see if we can get this all to bits today. Let's crack on. First things first, let's knock off these tags. I'm just using a big, a big old flat wood chisel here because it's nice and easy just to get in underneath these nuts. As I say, we've marked all these. If we can get this just broken down to deer, it'd be really good. because we were off the other day. That's just going to come off. That's going to just come off. Right. One. Two. Three. 
as I say, I've marked wherever I marked there. I've marked them with the one dot, marked them with one dot, so everything goes back in its same location. Okay, let's get the diff out. There we go. Let's oh, just pop that over there for a minute. You can see clearer here the fact that this is standing. So with that screwdriver blade standing proud out of there. Okay. The next job is to take the nut on the front of the pinion shaft off. This is inch and eighth UN C I think it is. But it's left hand thread. So to do that we have got an inch and eleven sixteenths socket, three quarter drive. I've got a bit of soft plastic here that we are going to put into when I find it. We're going to put it into um, there, put it into that gear. So that it bites and hopefully prevents it from turning. I will loosen it. Nope, it's going straight through. Get a bit of wood. Right. So I put a bit of wood in to block the pinion shaft from turning. Let's we'll see if we can get this loose now. I took a bit of getting loose. I'll put a one meter breaker bar in across there, get Debs to lean on that. Or if I put a cheetah bar and on this side to break that loose. So, let's get that cracked off, get this front bearing carrier pulled out. I don't think my little windy gun would have managed that, because that was tight. Take this off, pull the washer off from behind it, and we take out the six bolts that's holding this bearing carrier in place. This was the nut on the other gearbox that I did that somebody took off with the hammer and chisel. The nut to replace the nut itself it's 35 quid. Let's have a look in there. Thrust washer. That's what bearing in there. Okay, now. The end of that, all chewed up. Right, remove these six, we'll put a 3 eighths UNC in there and there and jack that body out. Have another little bag to put this lot in. These are all dirty bags that's been pre-used. 
and I'll reuse them until I get everything washed and cleaned up. In here, in between the carrier and this face is shims that sets how far the pinion goes into the crown wheel. Now, if we look here, if we look here, you can see how much that outer race has slipped backwards. There's another washer and a lock, uh, a lock nut here to stop it coming forward, stop it coming this way. But for some reason, the back one didn't stop it going backwards. A couple of three eighths UNCs to go in there. These are slightly longer than the bolts, the retaining bolts for this carrier. So you wind them in evenly. do as well get a soft hammer tap the shaft back in because you don't want this shaft popping out yet A bit more persuasive power on that. Okay, crash bang wallop. Sorry about that. He fell over there, didn't he? Must be the Christmas drink. Right, in our race off. We can now withdraw this. And you can see on here, our shins. There, got to go back in. There's the outer race of the inner bearing and the outer race of the outer bearing. They're opposing. And when we come to put them back together, we have to set that up so that there's two thou play in there. I'm going to pop the washer back on and the nut back on. just to protect that end. All right, let's get a cloth. As you can see here, what's happened is that back bearing has dropped out and it's not supposed to do that because this washer is supposed to maintain the outer race in the casting. So pull the spacer bars off, rattle the four nuts off, start and tap the front plate forward.
Okay. We're just going to put some witness marks on here. So these spacer rails are going to go back into the same position they come out of. One, one. Right. What we're going to do now. Knock this back. Now the book says you have to put low reverse into mesh. You leave two and three in neutral. Obviously you can't put it into mesh because there's the lockout in here. What we've got to do now is tap this forward. Plan here is lift the cover off, make sure this selector stays back till it clears the casting. Once it clears the casting the lockout in here can come out and this shaft can come out. So let's have a look. See if we can get this so I've turned the gearbox upside down because it's easier. I had picked the wrong selector because I was thinking of a car gearbox. I've just been to check the lid. We've now got the right selector, which is this gear, pried backwards into mesh with the reverse idler on the, the, sh the top shaft. So now this should come forward. And we have to bring this forward, bringing with it this shaft until this shaft clears the casting and then by that time we'll have to watch carefully that the balls do not drop out let's have a look see if we can get this then where's my pry bar which hopefully will allow us to get the gear further back there we go Now, it's coming. Right, one shaft out the way. Shims. Tent. Right, so the there's the lockout. Ah, 
that's a little with a little tit on it right that's out push that's the last one it is because there's the spring So this should come off now, and sure enough it does. I'll tell you what, that was a bloody ball ache that. That was not as easy as the last one. Let's see if we can get this pulled to bits. As I say, if we can just get this broken down. Oh, there's a boat, there's a needle. There's a needle. Or, could be the little pin out of the reverse idler. So I'll put that cloth under there. Let's put this over here. Yes, I think it's the pin out of that little washer. There. It's the pin out of that and that goes. I'll have to check that. That came out with the raised surface to the back. that way. So I'm pop that over there. That looks like there's a tiny bit of corrosion on the end of there. Anyway, reverse. No high low out. And what we'll use a soft mallet. Just gently does it. Sorry, can I see? Can you? Right. Select our out. Next, select our out. Gear out. Okay, let's knock that back race out of there. That has obviously been rubbing. You can see where it's rubbed the name off. It's been rubbing on the crown wheel. Now let's pull the spacer rails out now. And then we'll just be left with one bearing in there and retaining washers.
one, two, and I say we've we'll marked these on here so these spacer rails go back in the holes they came out of. Now these ones, these could have done with a um, machine surface on them. So you could put the spanner on. Distances are amazing. Oh, the hell's not tight. Will not wipe off our witness marks, though, will we? So I wonder. I wonder what's gone on. So we've took the edge off that retaining washer and allow the outer race to slide backwards. Fingers crossed eh? This one might be the same. Oh. Where's my pipe? Press these up. This one, especially because this is tight. So they must have had an awful lot of force on them. Right, so that's it, nearly the bits. So, what have we got? We've got what diff? The lay shaft with my shims and outer cup for this end. We've got the pinion shaft still intact with yeah, the race off the back that we need to look at. Front bearing carrier, bolts for the front bearing carrier, and the shims to go with that. And here we have the cap. For the number two side with the bolts and the adjustment nut, the reverse idler. As I say, this has a little pin goes in there and it fits into that reverse idler because that, that bronze or brass, whatever it is, is like a thrust washer for that and across there we have got the side rails or the spacer rails the cap and bolts and adjustment nut for the other side or selectors right so i'll tell you what that was a bigger ball ache than the other gearbox i took to bits
but never mind it's to bits now um the initial thing where i went wrong i had in my head that it was a car gear box first and second on the left third and fourth on the right and it's not that at all um it's the other way around so once i got the correct selector selected first in order to allow the lockout to maneuver to move um then we got it off all i've got to do now is i'm gonna put all this away now i'm gonna just pop it in there. i'm gonna get some red leg boxes out we're gonna put everything into boxes so it doesn't get damaged stuff will stay in bags with its relative components at least now we can get at the bits to strip the bits because i can do that in there not a problem now once i've got the big lump of bits the rest will just get a really good wash and clean we will look at that bearing this one as you can see on there where that has been catching on the crown wheel and yet i didn't see that when i washed that and i cleaned it i didn't see that so what we'll do we will have a look at the one that was on the other gearbox see if it's any better than this we'll, we'll dress that sharp edge off first and we'll check that because that may be fine it may just be that just wants the sharp edge dressed off we'll check it and see we'll give our space our rails a real good wire brushing in a clean and we'll get it washed up sorted out i might do a video on stripping the shafts and checking everything else i'm depends on what i find i might not i might just have a look at seeing what we've got and putting it back together put everything once a really good clean hopefully in the new year we've got some answers as to the condition of all this and we can move forward right so that's it for this video um thank you very much for visiting if you found it useful please give us a thumbs up like and subscribe tell your friends it all helps the channel grow spreads the word out there gets the, the videos more noticed by youtube algorithms more people can see them more people can hopefully gain something out of them or help us gain something out of them um as always your time is greatly appreciated but remember don't overthink it it's just nuts and bolts see you in the next one take care stay safe bye now mm -hmm.